I was introduced to jiu-jitsu over 15 years ago when I saw a skinny Brazilian dude choke out a pharmaceutical grade superhero in 57 seconds. Since then, I've studied with some of the best instructors on earth, but it wasn't until I trained with Eddie Bravo that I realized jiu-jitsu is way more than a world. It's an entire universe. Follow me as I navigate the twisters and turns of jiu-jitsu on the 10th planet. My name is Jason Eisner, and this is Mastering the System. You guys seen um, on the History Channel, I Know What I Saw? Have you guys seen this? Have you seen this, Joe? I Know What I Saw on History Channel? No, Dude, it's a document. You know they had the Disclosure Project, the, the UFO shit, 2003? Well, they had another one, 2007, when the History Channel was there, and they did a documentary. So, watch. It's a 90-minute documentary on the fucking History Channel. They were there asking questions, you know, at, in Washington, Washington D.C., National Press Club, all these fucking military, elite officers, all these dudes high in the government. The dude who used the Ministry of Defense from 1973 to 1977, they're all there. Uh, a group of soldiers, 80 of them, who all saw the UFO, 80 of them, in, in a U.S. military base in England. Oh 80 of them! They all saw it, they get reports, they had radar and everything, tests on the ground where it landed, three of them went up to it, and uh, the, the British Ministry of Defense just fucking didn't, they just ignored it. And all this shit came out, and it's a 90 minute documentary on, remember how they used to have like UFO documentaries, and they would always have two, at least two guys in, you know, taped professionally, sitting down going, well, these guys, it's just, you know, it's a uh, myth, it's uh, they have no proof. There's only every documentary, they have a dude debunking this shit. Not this one, 90 minutes, nothing. It was just dudes coming forward, all of them. 90 minutes of straight testimony. Holy shit. It's pretty incredible. I mean, it's basically, you watch this for 90 minutes, there's, there's nobody, what they're doing is they're showing, they'll show clips from past UFO documentaries where there is a guy going, oh, it's just myth, they don't know it. And it's funny, after you watch it, you're going, shit. And then Alan Heinick, remember Alan Heinick, he was the dude in charge of, in, in Blue Book, he would come forward and tell everybody in the 50s and 60s, on video, massive footage, and they show the footage. Him going, no, no, it's just meteors, it's swamp gas, in the 50s and 60s. Him coming out, and then they showed him going, I lied about it all. They told us a lot. It's all real. It's real shit. The 5% of all reported cases are, they say, they're saying, like, like top officials in France and England, they're letting this shit out. The 5%, the best possible scenario is beings from other planets. 5%. And there's over 25,000 reports. So 5% of 25,000. Holy fuck. Roswell, they go through Roswell. That's all. That was like three Roswells. That was the biggest one. The next two, they, just, they, sh they didn't do anything in the newspaper. They kept it under wraps. But pretty incredible. I know what I saw. Gotta fucking watch. Holy shit, it's going down. It's going down, dude. 2012, there's going to be some disclosure going down. Seriously. It's crazy shit. It's on the history channel now. Fuck. Can you imagine if that's just normal shit? Like, District 9 is, like, real? Like, that's just real shit? Like, you fucking we know about these bitches? Fuck. How would that change our everyday lives? Knowing that, god damn. <laughs> Woo! You guys want some complex shit? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're gonna go. We're gonna go over the mini stuff again. It's so very important to work your lockdown half to get that lockdown half together. You gotta get a guy in a lockdown. So it's it's very hard to get a guy in a lockdown who has dealt with it for a long time and hates it. I'm just going to not even deal with it, all right? If I know, you know, we've done this, we did this a few weeks ago. If the guy knows that this is the leg, like I'm on top and I know this is a strong lockdown, I'm going to keep the knee up. Why do this? Knee on the ground means you can get put in the lockdown. Knee up means you can't get put in the lockdown. We did this not too long ago. So 
This is the mini stomp, it's huge. Follow? So we're gonna start, he's gonna have his right knee up, all right? And we're just gonna fall right into your quarter guard and hook here, all right? This is the quarter guard clutch, all right? I would like to get double underhooks on with the lockdown, but he's fighting me off here. So this is the clutch. I'm on my side, all right? And then I'm, I gotta get this knee down. So he's trying to keep the knee up, I'm gonna try to get it down. I don't want it to go too wide, so I'm gonna keep it here, all right? If I could just push it down, then he's weak. He's gonna keep it strong. So I'm gonna go from quarter guard to mini stuff. You gotta get this down. This is huge. Quarter guard, mini stuff. From here, now we push the knee back and kick. Now we got the lockdown here. And now I got double underhooks. I'm gonna squeeze those double underhooks, perfect double underhooks, nice and low. We're gonna work on our footwork. He's a strong ass wrestler, so I'm not, I know I'm not gonna go through him. His wrestling is way too good. I'm gonna take the long, I'm gonna take the long way here to, um, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? We're gonna do a limp arm here. We're gonna change it up a bit. So I got perfect double underhooks here, and now I'm going to release the lockdown and go through perfect, perfect uh, leg work here. Straighten out the bottom leg. Left leg makes room for the right leg kicking back here. And before I even pull myself up, I put a butterfly behind the knee and I leg curl here. I know I'm not going through this guy. So I know we're gonna fight here. Different story. A couple weeks ago, we were just going right through the guy. Here, he's a wrestler, he's got a limp leg. This is to prevent him from limp legging. All right, I'm here. This is nice and wide. I'm pushing into him here. Now, at this point, he can't really do anything. He's stuck. This is a stalemate here. I can't go through him. He's too strong. That wizard's too strong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump into him, bump him forward, turn my uh, palm up, limp arm. He's going to go right to his back, and I'm going to sweep and pass. All right? So we're going to get up to perfect dog fight. There's going to be a struggle there. And he doesn't know if I'm going to jump on his back or limp arm, or try to go right through him, or try to take him over. We're going to mix it up. We're going to mix the ending up for the next couple weeks. But I just want to really work on the mini stuff and getting to perfect dog fight, right, where he can't limp leg. If I don't have my legs, if I don't have my legs like this, and I'm just here, if he's a good wrestler, he can pull that leg out and he face me, and we're, now we're wrestling. Right? Which, if that's what you want, if you just want to wrestle, that's beautiful. All you need is an underhook to get out. All right, so he's got his knee up. He's strong here. He's not weak. I jump in, get quarter guard, and I get the clinch, and he's pushing back. Quarter clinch. All right? You don't want his, his knee too wide, so we're going to go from quarter clinch or quarter guard to mini stuff. See how my ankle is touching his ankle? But my left knee is on the outside still. My right foot is on the inside. My left, I mean, my left foot is on the inside. My left knee is on the outside. You guys see that? I'm hooking ankle to ankle. Ankle to ankle. It's like I'm super strong, but on the ankle. Now here, I'm gonna use this foot to push back and push with my hands too. And now we're here. Double under, squeezing, safe from everything. Safe from all chokes, safe from Darcy's, guillotines, everything. And all my weight, I'm pulling up on my top of me. All my weight's on my shoulder and my head. Very important. I don't want any weight on my legs, so I can get up to my knees, nice and smooth, here. Bam. He's not going anywhere. Now we're stuck. But if he's a better wrestler than me, doesn't mean I'm gonna go through him. I can't go through him. So we gotta bump him sideways, and then bump him forward, limp arm, and then pass the guard. He's gonna to go to his back. His natural instincts are gonna to be to go right to his back rather than give his back. So you guys are thinking too, you're working your defensive instincts, that's the right thing to do. So he's got his knee up, quarter guard clench, mini stop, knock down, perfect double underhooks. On all my weights on the shoulder and my head, I get the foot. I go from a lockdown to one, Two, three, and right. 
So it writes that butterfly behind the knee. Now we're, still, we're leaning into it, pushing down here. My knee is wide. Bump them sideways, bump them forward. Flip. One more time. Quarter clinch. Maybe stop. Lock down. Perfect double underhooks. Nice and low around his waist. All my weight's on my head and my shoulder. One, two, three. Leaning inch. Leaning inch. Both of them. Got it? Quarter clinch. I don't know what the hell that is. Simple. Quarter clinch. Mini stomp to lock down. Perfect double underhooks. <coughs> Sounds simple, right? Let's go. We're about to. Practice the set. We got a gig coming up January 23rd at Legends. Oh <laughs> shit! The, the knives are playing. Also, it's going to be a strip pole extravaganza show plus two live bands. We're going to rock the fucking night away. Oh, We're actually going to play in the cage. No shit. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kings of the cage. You are now free to breathe poison air. I can't believe I didn't think about this shit a long time ago. Damn! Right there in front of my face. Not only does it make it easier to get the hand on the mat, but it makes it easier to uh, do the pump, to push the elbow in, to work with the arm bar, and it makes it easier to get to the duda, which means you can, you're halfway through a zombie and you're stuck. So the invisible crackhead is, is huge, but it's only it's only effective if you can double back. So if you're having flexibility problems, this probably ain't gonna work that good for you. So if he's postured up, if you don't have flexibility, we're gonna do the basic path. We're gonna bring it down to mission control. We work the zombie, we clear the neck. Or actually we're not gonna. Okay, no, forget it. We are actually not going to... This is all failed zombie stuff. Fucked up. Okay, because we're going to the doodah. All right? So the doodah is... For those of you that don't have flexibility, we break them down. Mission control. We can get the zombie. Just our hand gets through. But you see how I'm around, I'm around the back of his elbow here? I'm not underneath. I want to get on top of his elbow. Here. Over the elbow. Not under the elbow. Over the elbow. Not under the elbow. Right, but I got my hand through, but I can't complete the zombie. What I wanted to do is bring the zombie through, get that hand on the mat, but I only can get the hand through. All right? So now from here, I'm going to keep this leg curl, mission control, push his wrist between my legs, and now we're here in the doodah. We can tap him here, but what we're going to work on is swim moving this way, because if I stay here, he, my hand's trapped, so he can step over my, he can step over my body. Now I don't have shit. So as soon as we're here, we're gonna roll forward, like a swim move, and then end up on my knees here, in a triangle. From here, he can't step over shit. So we're like in reverse side control. All right, that's uh, the transition. Brazilian guy I trained with for many years named Duda. He got, he's a master of that shit. He was here a couple months ago showing us. So again, if you don't have flexibility, posture up is the first step. We gotta sit up, break him down, and we should control. We try the zombie, remember, over the elbow. We can't, we can only get our hand through. As soon as I let go of this mission control, we're gonna push that wrist between our legs and swing our right leg over. And now we have a gable grip here. And then from here, we're gonna roll. And you end up here, or on our knees here. Away from danger. No way he can pass us. We're rolling before he can roll. Because if we stay there and he steps over, we don't have shit. And if he pulls his hand out, he's passing.